The last one that I'm going to cover today is, is our favourite one, right? And I left the last one, I left this one till last. Why did I leave it till last? Because it's the worst of all. And that is that you have to repent or turn from your sin in order to be saved. And why is this the worst one in our day and age this day? Because a lot of churches that used to be right on salvation, used to preach salvation by faith alone, are starting to preach this heresy. And not only that, churches that believe salvation by faith and don't believe you have to turn from your sins in order to be saved, allow this heresy to be preached in their churches. What is going on? Uh, and you know, that's why today we want to shine a light on this heresy and expose it for what it is. Because this heresy of turning from your sins or repenting from your sins for salvation will never be preached in this church while I'm the bishop of this church. You know, I'm not going to have some, you know, big name guest preacher, you know, come in this church and that, I, that, that I supposedly like or whatever and he's going to get up and preach work salvation. You would think if you have somebody come and preach in your church it doesn't matter how big name they are wouldn't you figure out whether or not they even preach salvation correctly preach salvation clearly you know and think about what does it even mean to turn from sin you know they they use this phrase repent of your sin turn from your sin think about what this phrase even means um what does it mean to turn from sin isn't it just another way to say keep the commandments um, you know, let me give you an example. Let's say we take the commandment, the ninth commandment, thou shalt not lie. So if the commandment is thou shalt not lie, then what is the sin? The sin is to lie, isn't it? So if the commandment is thou shalt not lie, how do you keep that commandment? You don't lie, right? So if I'm going to turn from the sin of not lying, what do I have to do? Stop lying. So I turn from the sin, turning from the sin of lying is keeping the commandment of not lying. So when, we, when people say you need to turn from your sins or you need to repent of your sins, all they're saying is keep the commandments in another way. And this is why it's so subtle because they won't just come out and say you need to keep the commandments to be saved. Because if they got up and said, you know, you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. You need to keep the commandments and then believe on Jesus Christ and then you'll be saved. That, that won't come across well because people will say, wait a second, that's works. But if they get up in their pulpit and they say, well, you need to repent of your sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, all of a sudden that's, that's, that's fine. That's, that's not work salvation. That's not heresy. But they're just saying the same thing because to turn from sin is just another way to say, keep the commandments. And you know, we don't believe that you have to repent of your sins to be saved. And you know what people will say when you say that to them? You don't believe in repentance. Now this is a false accusation because do we believe in repentance? Yes, of course we believe in repentance. You know, we believe in repentance to be saved. But we don't believe that you have to repent of your sins to be saved. You know, do we believe in repenting of your sins? Yes, because as believers, we ought to repent of our sins. We ought to turn from our sins and keep the commandments. But do we have to repent of our sin to be saved? No, because this is works salvation. Now let me give you a couple of illustrations to, 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 to show you how silly this accusation is. Because if I said to you, I don't read the Quran, would you say to me, you don't read? No, it's not that I don't read, it's that I don't read the Quran. I read the Bible. So to say that I don't read, you're missing what, what our actual position is. And when people say, you know, you don't believe in repentance. No, we don't believe in repenting of sin in order to be saved. You know, another illustration would be, you know, when we say, I don't believe in works to be saved. And people will say, you don't believe in works? No, we believe in works. You're not listening to the whole sentence. We believe in works, but we don't believe in works to be saved. And it's the same with repentance. We believe in repentance. I believe in repentance. You have to repent to be saved, but you don't have to repent of sin to be saved. Because the word repent, the word repent is a verb, isn't it? It means to turn or to change. But the question is, when it comes to salvation, what do you need to turn from or what do you need to change in order to be saved? Uh, Hebrews 6 
Let's look here. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from sin. No, repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Why is it calling, why is it saying repentance of dead works? Because if you're trusting your works to save you, they won't. They're going to kill you. They're going to send you to hell. That's why it's dead works. So we're not repenting from sin and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're repenting from dead works and we're putting our faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know, some people will say, yeah, but John the Baptist preached repentance. You know, Jesus preached repentance. Well, they did, didn't they? They preached that you had to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh, J Jesus said, repent and believe the gospel. So there's that repenting from dead works and believing the gospel. But we don't even have to guess what the message of John the Baptist and Jesus was because in Acts 19, it defines what the message of John the Baptist was. Look at what it says here in verse 4. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. So there's the baptism of repentance that John was performing, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. So did John and Jesus preach repentance? Yes, but what were they preaching when they preached the baptism of repentance? saying unto the people, so this is what they were saying when they were preaching the baptism of repentance, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. Very clear that the baptism of repentance is not turn from your sin or repent of your sin to be saved. It's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what salvation is. Let's look at this passage in Matthew 21. Matthew 21, reading from verse 25. Verse 23, sorry. <clears throat> and when he was coming to the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I also ask you one thing, which if ye tell me, I in likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, whence was it? From heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, Why did ye not then believe him? For if we shall say of men, we fear the people, for all hold John as a prophet. And they answered Jesus and said, We cannot tell. And he said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. But what think ye? So what is, the, what is the context here in this parable he's about to give? It's the baptism of repentance. Did it come from heaven or did it come from men? Verse 28, But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not, but afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second and said, Likewise, and he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father, they say unto him, The first. Jesus saith unto them, Verily, verily, verily I say unto you that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not, but the publicans and the harlots believed him. And ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward that ye might believe him. So what is this parable talking about? It's talking about two sons. One is saying that he doesn't, doesn't want to work in the vineyard, but then he repents and then he goes to work in the vineyard. And then another son says, I'm going to go work in the vineyard, but then he changes his mind and doesn't go to the work. And if you read only up until that point, you might get the idea, well, isn't the repentance repenting of sins? Because, you know, one son said he wasn't going to keep the commandments and then he repented of that and then he kept the commandments. He kept the commandment of his father. But we don't have to guess what this parable means because if we just read a little further, Jesus actually explains to us what this parable means. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness and ye believed him not. So there's that saying unto them that they should believe on him which should come after him that is on Christ Jesus. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. And ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward that ye might believe him. 
So what is this repentance? Is it, is it them repenting of sin? Or is it them repenting of the fact that they did not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, we see here that it's because they didn't believe that's the repentance they needed in order to be saved. Jonah 3. Absolute proof that turning from your sins is works. We know the story that Jonah went into the city of Nineveh and he preached to them to turn from their sins. Otherwise, God was going to destroy the city of Nineveh. And look at what it says here in verse 6. It says, For word came unto the king of Nineveh. So he's now hearing the words that Jonah is preaching in Nineveh. And he arose from his throne and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands, a.k.a. their sins, right? Who can tell if God will turn and repent? And turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not. See, the word repent can't mean to turn from sin in and of itself because God repents in the Bible. God doesn't have any sin. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? And look at this. And God saw their works. So what did they do, right? They turned from their evil way. It said God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he said he would do unto them, and he did it not. Very clear there. I think this is the nail in the coffin for people that believe you have to turn from your sins or repent of your sins to be saved and claim that that is not salvation by works. Because the Bible says here in Jonah 3.10 that God saw their works. What did he see? He saw their works that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he said he would do unto them, and he did it not. The Bible defining there that turning from your evil way, turning from sins is works. And we know that salvation is not by works, but turning from your sins is. You know, I had one preacher tell me once, um, he said, yeah, but that's not talking about works as in keeping the law. That's just saying God saw their works, meaning he, he just saw their deeds. He just saw what they did. But he doesn't, he's not saying that that's the same works um, that Ephesians 2 is talking about. Yeah, but then if we see in Romans 3, and we already went here, therefore by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. And we see here in verse 28, therefore we conclude that a man is justified without, by faith without the deeds of the law. So even if you were to change that word works into deeds, our deeds don't save us. Our works don't save us. And if we have to turn from our evil way, that is deeds, that is works. And, you know, somebody might say, you know, well, I don't believe in repenting of your sins to be saved. You know, I don't believe you have to turn from your sins or repent of your sins to be saved. But I'm still going to say it when I preach the gospel. I'm still going to say repentance because John said repentance and Jesus said repentance. Well, you know, I'm not against people saying repentance when they preach the gospel to people. Um, but the reason why I don't say that people have to repent in order to be saved is because... You know, most people nowadays, they think that the word repent means to turn from your sins. So if I'm going to use the word repent to explain the gospel to somebody, but then I have to clarify what that word repent means, because I don't want them to think that I'm preaching work salvation. I'm going to tell them to repent. But then I explain to them, oh, but repent actually just means that you believe on Jesus Christ. Well, to me, then why, not, why even use the word? Because if you're going to use the word and then have to define it for them, why not just explain that salvation is by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ instead of using the word repent and then explaining that they have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, this isn't a problem anyway. Because, you know, the book of John, it says here in chapter 20, verse 30, and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his, main, through his name. So we see here in John chapter 20, the purpose of the book of John. The purpose of the book of John is that believing you might have life through his name. He's written these that you might believe that Jesus 
is the Christ. So the book of John was a book written for the sole purpose of convincing people that Jesus is the Christ and that people would believe on the name of the Son of God. But you know what's interesting about the book of John? It doesn't mention the word repent, repentance, even one time. So people that are saying, oh, well, you're not preaching the proper plan of salvation. You're not preaching uh, salvation correctly if you don't mention repentance. Well, did John preach salvation, right? I mean, he wrote a whole book, 21 chapters, not even mentioning the word repent. Did he mess it up? No, God doesn't mess things up because repenting in order to be saved is the same as believing on the Lord Jesus Christ because when you turn from dead works, you turn from trusting works, you are repenting, you're believing on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. 